Hello, this is Brett from 2TechTeachers.com and CrucoPhotography.com. Here today to show you my next uh, step in teaching Photoshop to middle school students or upper elementary students. So previously we learned about using layers, and so we're going to kind of expand on that. But with this lesson, I like the kids to be able to um, get a little bit better at using the brush tool. Um, but not only using the brush tool, but also being able to really just get used to the idea of using the mouse in a, as a painting tool. Um, most schools don't have access to Wacom tablets. And so it's actually a bit of a skill to learn for students to get used to manipulating the mouse and getting it to control what's on the screen. And so this is a, a pretty cool practice exercise that also allows the kids to get used to the concept of working with layers. So the first thing I have the kids do is start with a, a black and white image. And I've got this image up on my blog um, for you guys to be able to use and work with your kids as well. Um, this is an image I took at Lighthouse in Marquette, Michigan. And the first thing we need to do is create a new layer. So on the bottom here, we just hit the new layer tab. And I'm going to start with painting. I'll start with the sand. I guess it really doesn't matter where I start. And so what I'm going to do is change my colors over to a nice light brown. Now the browns are going to be found in the orange section on your color palette. And we get the brush tool. You can press B to jump to that. And I'm going to go with more of a medium hardness brush. And I'm just going to go ahead and start painting this in. And you notice it does not look very good. It's like I'm working in a coloring book or a kindergartner. Just go ahead and paint this picture. Well, that's not what I want. I want it to look realistic. And so we're going to start working with blending modes. And so I'm going to change normal to overlay. And what this does is it starts to bring through the texture. But you also notice that this color that's being painted because of the shade of gray that I'm on is not necessarily the exact same tan that I chose out of the color palette. And so that's one tricky thing for kids to get used to working with, especially when it comes to choosing a decent skin tone if your kids are going to be um, coloring a portrait. Now, as you do let kids choose what they want to color, I recommend having them choose something that's going to have um, fewer colors or um, not quite so many patterns, um, just because you want to start them off with something that's a little bit easier. So maybe flowers or basic landscape scenes and so forth. Now, if I want to zoom in here, Control Plus is the shortcut on the keyboard. And that will allow me to get a little bit closer for some more accurate detail. I also like to turn on zooming with the scroll wheel, and it's under Edit, Preferences, General. And then I can make sure to zoom the scroll wheel is checked so that I can just roll with my mouse. Now, I also want to make my brush a little bit smaller here. I'm going to be getting up against the edge of the water. So I like to use the shortcuts next to the letter P. I've got two brackets, um, the squiggly and square brackets. And so the open bracket will make my brush smaller. And then the closed bracket makes my brush a little bit larger. Now I'm keeping a um, medium brush hardness because this is going to allow me to slightly feather the water and the sand. But now if I accidentally go up into the water like that and make a mistake, I can hit E for eraser. And then I can just go ahead and erase that since I'm working on a, a separate layer by itself. And then B for brush will jump back to it. So now I'm not going to go ahead and um, finish this. But if you are going to switch colors, so you create a new layer, change it to overlay, and I'm going to go ahead and paint this lighthouse now with a nice bright red. Definitely going to need to zoom in. And here's an instance where I'm actually going to, to decrease the hardness element to zero. I want to have a solid edge between the lighthouse and the sky. And I'm going to be kind of sloppy around the windows and everything just to give you the idea of how this works. And again, this is really just designed to help kids get used to working with layers, blending modes, as well as uh, mouse control with painting. Now, you'll notice there was some snow there. I'm just going to change blend modes to see 
how this might look. And you're going to notice that certain blend modes do different things. What I can actually do is just click back up on Dissolve right, right at the top here. I can just roll my mouse wheel um, and see how these act differently. I think I'm just going to be sticking with overlay here though. And the reason I'm doing this is because I noticed that there's some snow on the front of the, of the building and typically when you're painting on either white or black now this is pure white or pure black and you notice there's pure black in the window here it does not change however the snow was a shade of gray so therefore um, the snow on the front of the lighthouse actually went to a pink which is not what I want so I do need to press the E key on the keyboard go to my eraser and I'm going to erase where the snow was and then I would zoom in and clean that up with the brush so that's kind of the idea of how using the brush tool works now of course there's if you if the actual goal is to go through and paint your image well there's gonna be better ways to do so and I'll go ahead and show you one of those right now so control zero is the shortcut to zoom out and get back to normal viewing and right away I'm gonna create a new layer and that's would be a bad idea to double click and have the kids name the layers so they get an idea of what they're going to be working on because you have to remember that if they're going to switch back to paint the lighthouse for example they want to go back to that layer um, because later on when they start manipulating layers um, one of the biggest things the kids say is well I can't do this it's not working for me well chances are they're probably on the wrong layer so I'm going to click on my background here for a second and go up to the quick select tool with a little bit bigger brush. I'm just going to go ahead and select the sky. You notice it's doing a pretty nice job of it until it gets into this area. Uh, and I've got some trees and stuff to deal with. So I'm going to take those out of there. And now this is, well, actually I'll leave them in. Just because I don't know that I want to go through the painstaking process of being very precise in this. So this may not have been the best image to choose for coloring, but hopefully it gives you the idea. Or hopefully the trees are just dark enough that what I'm about to do isn't going to matter anyways. So we'll find out. So I'm going to go back to my sky layer that I just created. And I am I could do this a couple of different ways. I could paint bucket it. I could go up to edit, fill. Or I can just go with the paintbrush, grab a nice blue this was kind of a cold, dreary day, so I'm just going to go with a, almost like a blue-gray. And I've got a nice large brush, and I can paint like crazy here. And you notice it's nice and solid, and the reason is, I need to change it to overlay. There we go. Now, it actually doesn't look so bad with those trees being selected. So I think I'll go ahead and leave it like that. Now I did get a little sloppy on the lighthouse there, on the, on the top of it, so I would want to definitely clean that up. Oops. I want the eraser tool, not painting white, there we go. And I'll just do a quick sloppy cleanup job so you get the idea once again. You notice it's not erasing the red, that's because I am on a different layer. That is one of the great features of Photoshop, working with layers. Okay, close enough for now. Now another cool trick I could do with this concept here is I can take a control click on this thumbnail and I'm going to get my sky selection back. And I could do a gradient. So I want you to gradient from this shade of blue And let's see here. So we got that blue there. And I'm going to actually gradient almost to like an orange, kind of like a sunset look here, maybe. Let's see how it looks. Oops. You can preview your gradient up here. Now if I draw this, it's not too bad. And so if it's a little too strong, what I could do is I could back that off 
using the opacity. And that's not not too bad right there. And then of course I would want to go through and paint the water. Oops. Broke my own rule. Make sure you create a new layer. Overlay. Start painting the water. And now, logically, the way you would want to paint this is you're going to want some of the orange to bleed into the water. So this is where I would actually go with a soft brush. Sample that orange. I'm going to push my hardness all the way up. And I'm just going to kind of feather along the horizon. Whoops. I had it right the first time. Hardness all the way down. So that's the idea there. And then you'd want to go through, paint your rocks. You can create another new layer real quick. Finish up the grass. More of a yellow, yellow orange, I suppose, in the grass. And that's definitely a bit strong. So I'm going to just grab the opacity, pull it down. It's not bad. It's very similar to the color of sand, just a slight difference to it. And I. You know, that's the concept. I'm not going to go ahead and finish it up or pay too much attention to detail. Just wanted to give you a basic idea of how you can go through and hand color a black and white photo to teach kids the concept of brush control, blending modes on your layers, and just working with layers in general. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comment box, um, either on this YouTube video or head on over to my blog at 2techteachers.com. Thanks for watching.